Tell us how the kind of idea for his look and the hat, obviously, the jacket, and how that came about. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, of course, who's in the audience, but these stories are... <laughs> How much I, I mean, if there's stories that you can find, oh my goodness, I, was, I should say, let's just go on readers.net or indie.com. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, the story was that um, we had Tom Selleck, right? And Tom Selleck, uh, so gorgeous then. Tom Selleck, and Tom Selleck was cast as Indiana Jones. And so I had this Larry cast in screenplay. I had the office next to Steve. And the truth is, I never saw Judge Lucas until he came here, but never mind. And, <clears throat> and it was very specific about what he was wearing. And, and, and I didn't invent the look for Indiana Jones. Uh, that was an archetype. He was an archetype that, that came from, really came from, 1940s adventure serials, Hollywood adventure serials. And we did, Steve and I did sit in a the theater alone and we saw The Treasure of the Incas, right? And The Treasure of the Incas, I once showed them, shot their own, The Treasure of the Incas, okay, it may not be shot for shot, Ready to lost art, but pretty fucking crazy. <laughs> I mean, if you can get your hands on Treasure of the Incas 1953, it's pretty much Indian Jones. And there is Charlton Heston wearing a big fedora, wearing a brown leather jacket. He's a he's a not very nice archaeologist who, like Indiana Jones, destroys every a place he goes, right? <laughs> every place he goes. And there's a golden idol and all of that. And you know, Stevens with me, he says, okay, you see, I want that. Could you please do that? So um, I I don't want to diminish my contribution, not at all. I own it. I own it. I'm the mother. Uh, so I, I, I do own it. Um, and I did take it from that idea through making that costume for Tom Selleck to Tom Selleck dropping out and then having to remake it all here in London in Camden Town at Burns and Nathan's for, um, for Harrison Ford, Han Solo, um, who was at a place in Dafton. And I, I did make it. Now, after, after that screening of Church of the Incas, uh, Stephen and I were sitting together. And I said, Stephen, I had one of these. And I said, Steve, do you want to, why don't you just draw him for me? So he took a pen and he drew that image that you saw in the Hollywood costume catalog. It's very sweet. And it says six foot. Six foot two, which of course just happens to be exactly Harrison's height, six foot two. Right. But he drew, looks very much like a 12 year old, like a 12 year old boy. <laughs> and it's the incredibly sweet drawing, which I yes, have. Yes. God knows what it's worth. Um, Quite a lot, Bonnie Bay, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one. So, um, but, you know, it was very much what he had in his head. And I think um, Indiana Jones is. We're so lucky to have had Harrison because um, it's not that Tom Selleck, uh, Tom Selleck, the whole other thing, but it was Harrison's um, reticence and his intellect and his charm. Um, he wasn't an obvious choice, but I think I think it was Harrison's personality that made that character, not the costume. I mean, he made the costume what it is. But, um. However, costume is important, uh, and you said on more than one occasion, I think costume is character, and it, it, it's not just the way a character speaks or their actions or, you know, what the actor themselves look like, but costume, most cinema goers don't know, I don't think anyway, the importance of costume, but but it is, and people generally 
well, I don't know if it depends on the genre, but they don't recognise the costume. One might say that, or, or, or are aware of it. One might say that's a good thing. But ultimately, costume probably may not get the recognition it deserves. So can you sum up the importance of costume in film, Deborah? Um, sure. Quite a, you sure. know. Um, well, look, you, in, in a movie, if a movie works, you're not supposed to notice anything. I, I mean, nothing. Um, uh, but everything in a everything in the frame is constructed. Everything in the frame is is there to support the narrative. And uh, I'm 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 not I'm just going to say this once. But everything in the frame has uh, two purposes, and the two purposes are to support the visual story. So imagine uh, no dialogue. Of course, music always. John always says there's never been a silent movie because movies always have music. So the music is the heartbeat and always there supporting the movie. But say you're looking at a frame and all you hear is the, the music. That frame without any text or dialogue is also helping to tell that story. So um, we're supporting the the narrative, the storytelling, but we're also supporting the frame. So I want all of you to think about what you're wearing right now. So think about what you're wearing right now. And now I'm going to ask you the audience questions. Are you ready? I'm going to expect to see a show of hands. Are you ready? How many of you are wearing something that you bought over the weekend? Nobody. Nobody. How many of you are wearing clothes that are over five years old? Over five years old. Hands up. All right. How many of you have had a different hair color? How many of you have tattoos? How many of you want to have tattoos? How many of you are wearing a gift from someone? Hands up. Gifts. How many of you are wearing something that does not belong to you? <laughs> right, does not belong to you. How many of you have borrowed that, that thing that you're wearing? And do they know you've borrowed it? Okay. <laughs> How many of you have older brothers and sisters? How many of you have younger brothers and sisters? All right. Um, how many of you have a pair, a multiple pair of a piece of clothing, like a multiple pair of jeans that you love? Okay, so let me tell you about your clothes. All of you make decisions about your clothes that are different than the decisions being made by the person sitting next to you, male or female, even if you're exactly the same age, even if you grew up in exactly the same house, even if you're twins. So your clothes, your clothes, whether you like it or not, are part of your identity. They your choices. And, and our role as costume designers is to make the audience believe that the people in the movie have had a life before the movie begins. They are not born fully formed from the head of Zeus. They did not walk into Gucci or Yves Saint Laurent or the Westfield Mall and buy everything that day. That each and everything that they're wearing is as complicated and has as much of a story as the clothes that you're wearing now, including glasses frames, including that their hair was once blonde or green or yellow, whatever it is, right? So that what you're wearing right now, your choices, are an amalgam of your life. You bought it on a trip. You inherited it from your aunt. Your, you, your boyfriend left you, but he loved his shirt, and you still have it. Whatever those stories are, 
exist in the world of a character as well. And in fact, I've given up in my own teaching, even the word character I've given up, because now I just talk about people. Because if, if we believe, if the audience believes that we're looking at characters, they don't give a shit. Why do we pay all that money? We, we, we want suspension of disbelief. We have to believe yes, yes. the people on the screen are real. Now, if you have a movie like Elizabeth, or you have a movie like that's coming out, um, what's that movie about? There's a movie about uh, like Queen Anne, and then there's another movie about uh, Queen Mary that's coming out. If you have a big costume film with a lot of hair, Right, a lot of hair, a lot of corsets, a lot of dress, a lot of yardage. Um, we all know that those are costume films. Those are the films that win the Oscar. Right? Don't worry, they win the Oscar. But when you're telling stories, mostly this is our work. How do you create these people? How do I create each of you? to make you real enough. This is the artistry of costume design. Was I clear? Yeah. yeah.